Welcome to Practical Home Projects. So we're wrapping up our kitchen renovation and the last step is to install the toe kicks. The first decision you have to make when doing a toe kick is whether you want to buy the store-bought type, which is usually about a quarter of an inch thick uh, MDF laminate and it's pretty floppy, or if you want to make it from scratch out of a piece of wood. We went with the making it from scratch method for a couple of reasons. The first one is that our toe kick is actually a little bit taller than standard. Ours is about four and a half inches tall and we didn't want a half inch gap. The second biggest reason is that since we have this LVP flooring installed, we want to make sure we can cover that up. And, you know, this piece of wood is thick enough to do that. If we had used the, you know, MDF trim, then we would have had to use a quarter round in order to cover it up. The third reason is surprisingly a piece of wood is cheaper. Those uh, toe kick strips are about $24 a piece at the store, whereas this piece of wood was only about $12. And then lastly, of course, is that this is going to be a lot sturdier. So those MDF trim pieces, once they get wet, they might start to delaminate over time and they might start to get uh, crinkled, whereas this, I think, is going to be sturdier. So right here in our floor, there is actually a little bit of a dip. So if I just used a straight edge, you would see maybe a quarter inch gap. The way I was able to, you know, essentially scribe that profile of the floor was to overcut my board just a little bit and then rest it there. And then wherever I noticed was a contact point, I would shave off a little bit, then try again. So it probably took three or four trial and error attempts before I was able to get a relatively good contour with the floor. We have only interior corners in our kitchen, which is to say that all of our corners are kind of covered by the cabinets. So it doesn't really matter if we use a miter joint, which means you have two 45 degree angles coming against each other, or if we just use a butt joint, which is kind of a 90 and a 90 against each other. However, if your kitchen has any external corners, which is to say that this trim would be a little bit more exposed, then you should definitely be using miter cuts, because that way you'll have finished surface on both sides. We originally had this type of color toe kick, so we brought that to the store and they were actually able to color match it. And then they took a clear stain and they were able to tint that stain to help us paint this wood to stain it to look like this. And actually the first time we applied it, it was a little bit too red. So we added a little bit of a darker colored stain to help us mellow out the color. Now when you're applying it, if you just apply it very quickly and then you can wipe it off, you'll get a lighter color. Now when you're applying it, if you just apply it very quickly and then you can wipe it off, you'll get a lighter color. Or you can apply it and let it sit for a little bit before you wipe it off and you'll get a little bit darker color. You can also apply multiple coats to allow you to kind of get the richness of the color. Just be careful that the more coats you apply, the less that wood grain color is going to come through. After applying our stain and letting that fully dry out, we put a polyurethane coating on top to help protect it a little bit. There's two schools of thought when it comes to applying the toe kicks. So they can either be installed with an adhesive or with nails. I think since we have a solid piece of wood, nails are going to hold it in a little bit more firmly. And we actually went with both. So we applied glue, especially at the seams of the cabinets, and then we applied some finishing nails along the top. By just applying nails at the top, we don't have as many holes to putty, whereas if they were you know, top and bottom, then it would be a little bit more obvious. I'm satisfied with the amount of gap that we have left over here. However, if you have a little bit more gap or if you have a different flooring type where it's not as conducive to just leaving it like this, you may need to leave that quarter round and that lets you really cover up that seam between the toe kick and the floor. As we're installing this last toe kick, we have an obstacle which is this vent coming up out of the floor. You can check our description to see exactly which vent extender we use to get it popping out of the cabinets like this. Um, we're going to end up covering that up with this grill and I'm going to mount the grill directly to the toe kick. So in order to measure out exactly where we want that space to be, I'm going to flip this toe kick upside down, pop it into place, so uh, side to side it's in the exact position that we want, and then just mark the left and the right, and then we will have cut it exactly to that width, and then I'm going to use the grill itself to kind of help me with that vertical placement. And I know I'm going to want it right about there, so that'll give me a little bit of a wooden lip on the bottom. So I'll measure that gap, and then I'll mark that on the toe kick. Once I got the drawing completely done on the back of the board, I drilled holes in each corner so that I could mark it from the front or the back. And then, since I don't actually own a scribe saw or anything, I used a circular saw just to make those long horizontal cuts. And then I used that same saw to kind of score those short cuts. And then what I ended up doing is just using a wider drill bit and drilling a hole into the corners 
and then I used a handsaw to finish cutting out those short segments. And then of course, once it was completely cut out, I used the same saw to kind of clean up the edges a little bit. I was actually a little bit nervous about this part of the project because I didn't realize that we could just get, do a color match for the stain, but actually straight from the store the color worked out pretty well and we only had to modify it a little bit. And I would say actually the most difficult part was matching that contour of the floor. The toe kicks are a pretty underrated part of your kitchen, but if you mess them up then it'll really stand out, so it's important to do a good job on those. And if you have either custom built cabinets or something that you're trying to piece together then it's, make, it's important to make sure that they match everything. And then like our case, we found it was actually cheaper to build those toe kicks ourselves than it was to buy them off the shelf. If you have a scribe saw or something else, that might make it a little bit easier to do this vent cutout. But you saw from our video today that we could do it with just a hand saw. So, you know, don't let the tools limit you. If you guys have any more suggestions for anything that we could have done differently, please put that down in the comment section below. And if there's anything else you'd like to see in the future, we'd love to hear about it. Thanks guys. See you later.